morning, everyone. Um, I am uh, Maurizio Ferreira Crema, and uh, this paper has been written in collaboration with Paolo Cremonesi and Edith uh, Mariana. Now, we all know that deep learning has been an incredibly successful technology on a variety of fields and has allowed tremendous improvements in many of them. However, um, some papers in fields of machine learning and information retrieval point out that problems in today's research practice. In particular, uh, in some cases, in some circumstances, the improvement that deep learning algorithms allow to achieve is not as strong as expected. Since this mirrored our experience in some scenarios for recommended systems, we decided to endeavor in this uh, analysis. The goal of this paper is to study the evaluation and reproducibility of recent deep learning algorithms applied to the trend recommendation problem. Now, to the methodology. Uh, we decided to uh, consider four conferences, REXIS, WWW, KDD, and CIR, and selected long papers from 2015 to 2018, applying deep learning to the traditional top-end recommendation problem, so no uh, session aware models, no group-based recommendation and such. Also, we want the deep learning algorithm to be evaluated on at least one accuracy method. The, the papers satisfying those conditions are considered to be relevant, as uh, the term we use in our paper. Now, for each of them, we want to assess how, uh, how easy it is to reproduce those results, but we adopt a particular, defi a particular definition for it. Um, we try to get the original source code with implementation of the original authors, and um, at least one public data set that algorithm was evaluated. If not available, we send an email to all the authors and wait for a month to get a reply. Now, to some statistics. Uh, there is a wide variance uh, across conferences. The conference with the highest number of reproducible, highest quota of reproducible paper was ADD with 75%, followed by DubDubDub -dub -dub with 50%, then SIGAYAR with 30%, and unfortunately, this conference is at the very bottom of the list with 14%, but it is the conference with the highest number of relevant papers. Uh, overall, we could find 18 relevant papers, but only 7 we could reproduce, which is slightly less than 40%. Now, this is the list of the papers we managed to reproduce. I'm not going to go into the details because we have no time, but uh, you may find all the relevant information in our paper. What I want to mention is that those articles are, to some degree, uh, connected. This graph showed um, the relations in terms of which algorithm each is using which other algorithm as baseline. Now you can see that the only paper from 2015 is used by one paper from 2017, and the, both articles from 2017 are used in uh, most of the 2018 articles. One in particular is always considered as a baseline. So there is a certain propagation of what is the current state of the art. Now, as I said, only uh, seven papers could be reproduced. Now, why is that? Uh, we sent emails to all of the authors, but unfortunately, we only got three replies. In one case, the material was lost. In two cases, there were confidentiality agreements in place. And in eight out of 11 cases, we received, again, no reply. So the main problem we had was that authors were not providing us with the assistance we needed. A special mention to three articles which had publicly available source code, but the code didn't work. There were missing dependencies and problems, so that we, we were not able to uh, use them. Now, to the experimental procedure. Uh, we wanted to replicate exactly the same experimental methodology as the original paper, so we used the same data, the same train test split, and we evaluate with the same metrics and cutoffs. Uh, if we have access to the original train test split, we use that split. If not, we reproduce it using the information provided in the paper. As for the other parameters, for the deep learning algorithms, we use the original hyperparameters, which is acceptable because we are using the same data and the same evaluation procedure. But for the baselines, we use a Bayesian hyperparameter tuning, exploring 40 cases. 
Um, the beach lines we use are very simple. There is one topographical recommender, a few collaborative filtering models, heuristic ones, and two graph-based models with the alpha and arbitrary beta. Then a very simple item canon, content-based and collaborative, it's a hybrid model, and SIM, which is the only machine learning algorithm we use. The reason for this is that some algorithms were evaluated on movie lens, on which uh, machine learning models are known to perform very well, so we chose to add it to the list. Now, to the results. This table shows the list of the various deep learning models, and the numbers you see represent the number of uh, percentage of experimental conditions in which the deep learning model was competitive against the baseline, so the higher, the better. This column refers to all the simple personalized content and collaborative baselines, and we can see that there are two algorithms which are never competitive. The others are competitive between, in between 30% and 50% of cases, and only one, the last one, the additional load encoder, is always competitive. If we add the non-personalized baseline, we see that we lose an algorithm, uh, in that specific case where it was competitive, uh, to popular recommender was able to outperform everything, and lastly, if we add SLIM, we see that the number of competitive papers decreases again. Um, the only three that are reproducible and competitive are competitive in less than 40% of cases, but for relatively long cutoffs between 100 and 300. And uh, the original encoder is competitive in a more or less consistent way. Now, why are our results so different from the ones reported in those original papers? The main problem we could spot uh, was the use of weak baselines, either weak models or uh, machine learning models which were not properly tuned and optimized for the data set. In some cases we saw the authors explicitly mention they use default hyperparameters, although applied on different data sets, different evaluation methodologies. Lastly, we spot some methodological issues, like the number of epochs in some implementations were chosen using test data, and all sorts of experimental procedures adopted with combinations of datasets, splitting methodology, recommendation list length, and metrics with no uh, description of why that specific methodology was adopted. Now, how can we move forward? Well, I'm a young researcher, so I don't have the pretense of telling experienced ones how to do their job, but if I perhaps could provide a hint uh, keep using simple baselines, which have proven to be very effective, and properly tune them. Improve the reproducibility by using, for example, virtualization technology, and including preprocessing and tuning code. There are many details that, for space reasons, can't fit in the paper. Also, improve the motivation of the experimental design to clarify why that specific scenario is relevant. This could allow us to more clearly see when a certain technology is clearly competitive. Now, uh, we try to be as fair as possible, but we are humans after all, so if you spot uh, issues in our evaluation methodology or you believe your own algorithm was not treated fairly, please and let us know. Now, there is an extended version on the way, so if you are interested, please follow our lab on the search gate. We uh, increase the number of conferences, we have 26 relevant articles, 12 of them reproducible, and to give you an idea of the computational time this required, we ran 41,000 experiments for 250 days on Amazon AWS, AWS. So, thank you for your attention. Oh, thank you so much. Fascinating topic. So I just wondering if you have any two cents for the people in industry and people in academic. So you know, people in industry, they probably maybe deep learning might not work well in some case, compared with the baselines, but deep learning models are pretty fast and you can use the MMI learning to do that. So what can the people in industry will take from your paper, and also for people in the academic, so when they do the comparison between two recommendation models, how we can do to make, make it really fair to compare with the, like the, like the classical models, how can we make it fair to compare with the different hyperparameter tunings? Thank you. Okay. 
Sorry. I started ask, I was asking like for okay, I admin mean, for research how when we like propose a new recognition model and when we compare with the classical ones, how can we make it a really fair comparison? Like how can we make it really fair that we spend the same effort to tune the hyper parameters so that to prove that the proposed model is really work better than the baseline models? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. That, that's quite an important problem. Now, uh, in our paper, we considered a fixed number of functional evaluations, which is 40. However, um, I would assume that from an industry point of view, what really matters is how much time it takes to optimize something and how much resources it takes. So, uh, perhaps um, it would be it would have been more meaningful to use a fixed time on a given resource set in order to see how well a deep learning model or any machine learning model compares with simple baselines. Now, of course, simple baselines will allow to explore uh, a much higher number of hyperparameters while deep learning will be slower, but um, in some cases, the performance difference in terms of computational time was of a factor of a thousand, which may, makes, uh, I think, proper tuning quite difficult. Although, I must say that the code we used are from researchers which are not <coughs> engineered at a production level. I hope I answered your request. Um, so you say, how are we doing better? And of course, we are talking about recommender systems, it makes sense, we use top end. Um, I'm wondering if you have an opinion on how others are doing, uh, where deep learning is moving at an even more fevered pace, like in NLP, and if they're doing better in terms of their evaluation, what can we learn from them? Well, um, this, uh, this study was mostly concentrated on um, recommended systems, so I'm not super experienced on what other fields are uh, doing, but what I know that uh, in other fields like um, if I'm not mistaken, reinforcement learning, they have established a much stronger um, evaluation in terms of how paper are reproducible. This has allowed them to uh, perhaps avoid this opacity of a number of articles which are not clearly compared between each other. Now, of course, there are fields such as NLP, well, deep learning has provided extremely uh, impressive results, but uh, perhaps this is not the same scenario. So we should be maybe a little more careful in how we use technologies taken from other fields that have different data types, different behaviors. <coughs> yes. Is on the other floor? No? Sure. Here. Okay. Thank you. Ah, okay. Yes. Hey, uh, congratulations for the, this paper. I, I saw your, your post actually on Twitter several months ago. And at that time I asked you uh, uh, about uh, this model, but my impression is that deep learning can make more impressive results if you use a lot of types of data. If you use uh, word embeddings, uh, image embeddings, not only uh, like behavioral data, right? Uh, so my question is, is in your extension, in the next experiment we are doing, we are also considering architecture. We are uh, taking all this content uh, into account. Thank you. Um, in the extension, there are a few cases where deep learning was used to learn embeddings uh, and features. Uh, in that case, we uh, did not use. We tried to compare the um, quality of these features, but not using the deep learning algorithm that was later applied to those features. But the problem is that uh, in most of these cases, the, there is not an end-to-end -end connection between the, the papers we have considered, at least. There is not an end-to-end -end connection between the deep learning model providing the recommendations and the non-structured data it is trained upon, but there are two separate things, and we are using a deep learning model on very well-structured features. Uh, since we believe that this was the most um, I want to say critical, but perhaps less um, consistently 
clear scenario where the burning out performs the baseline, so that's the only one we focus on. So uh, we are not using, we are not evaluating the burning um, trade on non-structural data in the extension. But it could be another yeah. extension to the extension. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we can move to the second paper. Let's thank the speaker.